Hello friends, welcome to the channel. With the help of this video today, we will understand the narrative techniques of the most important British novels. Henry Fielding's Tom Jones, Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, Charles Dickens' Great Expectation, Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, E.M. Foster, A Passage to India. These five novels we can say are the most important novels of the subject, MEG03, and uh, there is always, almost always, one question related to narrative techniques. A question aapko history of English novels se related bhi aata hai. That video also I have covered. You can check the link in description. Let us proceed to today's topic now. Before moving further, please do not forget to share and subscribe the channel. Let us go first for Tom Jones. Henry Fielding's Picaresque novel hai. Picaresque aap sab jaanti hoonge. Picaresque se related bhi question aa sakta hai aapko. The History of Foundling published in 1749. The author exemplifies our world and the people who live in it in a very realistic and conventional contemporary world. Us time par 1740s mein log kis tarikhe se raha karte te kya mindset hoote hai sab kuch dikha hai gaya. Sab se pehle aapko introduction hi dena chahiye kisi bhi novel ka. Now let us come to narrative technique let us see the narrative techniques in order to satisfy his purpose the author creates a new style of telling the story ek naya hi tarika apnate hain the result is a first person narration combined with an omniscient perspective omniscient is someone who is present everywhere the omniscient narrator tells the history from the third person point of view and takes the position of a god god like figure God who knows everything. He is fully aware of the present, past, future events and can also see into his characters. Characters ke dil dimaag mein jhaak kar dekh sakte hai, can know their thoughts and their state of mind. But towards the readers, he takes the position of an explicit first person narrator. Readers ke saamne wo khud ko I keh kar hi associate karte hai, lekin events ko aise batate hai, jaise ki omniscient narrator ho. The narrator does not participate in the action directly. Directly book ke actions mein participate nahi karte. He stands off to the side observing and commenting. Aisa lagta hai ki ek side mein khade hai, ek corner mein khade hai, aur sirf observe kar rahe hai, comment kar rahe hai har event par, lekin I keh kar hi khud ko address kar rahe hai. And that is why he is a peripheral narrator. This word, yes, you can write in your exam, peripheral narrator. Peripheral narrator, basically the one who tells the story but is not part of the action but also connects with each and every character as if he or she is inside the story. You can say that kind of narrator to be a peripheral narrator. Next, Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, one of the most famous novels on this earth. Set in the country village of Longbourn in Hertfordshire, the story spins around the Bennet family and their five unmarried daughters, Jane, Elizabeth, Mary, Kitty, Lydia. Iske saath hi saath, her daughter ka characteristic bhi dikha hai jata hai, how they uh, move on in their lives and uh, which character is strong, which is not, kiski kya weakness hai and how do these characters overcome all their weaknesses. That has been shown in the story. Let us come to the narrative technique of this one. Pride and Prejudice is narrated by a third person omniscient narrator. Omniscient hum samaj chukke hai kaisa narrator jo ki har jake present rehta hai. The narrator has got an access and entrance into the thoughts and state of mind of all the characters. Har character ke del de maag mein ghus sakte hai aise narrator and defines their traits to the readers. उनकी क्या पर्सनालिटी है क्या वो सोच रहे हैं अभी क्या अगला एक्शन लेने वाले हैं उसका भी हिंट बहुत बार दे दिया जाता है द नरेटर ऑफ द नोवेल आल्सो ऑफन एड्स इंटरप्रिटेशन अपनी इंटरप्रिटेशन भी ऐड करते हैं बिकॉज दे आर द नरेटर इंटरप्रिटेशन अबाउट कैरेक्टर्स एंड देयर एक्शंस व्हिच हेल्प्स टू क्रिएट द रीडर्स ओपिनियन रीडर्स को भी अपनी एक ओपिनियन फॉर्म करने में बहुत हेल्प मिलती है व्हेन द नरेटर कीप्स ऑन गिविंग हिज और हर ओपिनियन the third person omniscient author technique we can call it in this method the narration of the uh, narration of this novel by jane austen is an 
complete control of the narrator of the story. Whatever he says, she says, we have to accept unquestioningly. And wherever the narrator leads us, we have to follow. The opening remark of the novel is such a good example of this narrative method. It is a truth, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. इस पूरे वीडियो को करकर आपकी काफी अच्छी रिवीजन भी हो जाएगी हर नोवेल के ईयर्स राइटर्स और नारेटिव टेक्निक्स पता चल रहे हैं आपको वोदरिंग हाइट्स 1847 का नोवेल है बाय एमिली ब्रोंटे प्राइमरीली पब्लिश्ड अंडर हर पेन नेम एलिस बेल व्हाई बिकॉज़ फीमेल्स वर नॉट नॉट अलाउड आई मस्ट नॉट से बट वर मॉक एक्चुअली बाय द सोसाइटी कि बीइंग अ फीमेल यू आर डूइंग राइटिंग नॉट पॉसिबल सो दैट इज व्हाई दे हैड टू अडॉप्ट दी uh, male pseudonyms at times. It is about two families in contrast living on the West Yorkshire Moors, the Unsures and the Lentons. This novel has got a very complicated narrator structure, I'll say. One of its kind, very unique, has got two narrators. And two narrators are also very distinct from each other. narrators Rahi hai bahut saalon se puri family ke one narrator is the listener of the other narrator. Mr. Lockwood jo ki tenant hai Heathcliff ke, he is narrator as well as Nelly Dean who has served both of the families, Anshaws and Lintons for years. Nelly Dean ek bahut hi achhi omniscient narrator ho sakti hai because unho ne dono families ko dekha hai bahut hi paas se. Mr. Lockwood jo ki tenant hai, nai nai aai hai, wo events ko janna chaate hai. Heathcliff, जो उनको थोड़े mysterious लगते हैं, and this Wuthering Heights ये place जो उनको थोड़ा सा mysterious लगता है, उसके बारे में जानना चाहते हैं, और वो उन्हें कौन बताता है? Nelly Dean. Nelly Dean अपने lens के through सारी story Mr. Lockwood को narrate करती है, and Lockwood tells the story to the readers. So एक filtered story हमें मिलती है. Mr. Lockwood's narration is the present time mention of the action and proceeding that occurs at present. Present flash me occur hoti and Nelly Dean's narration is the past time mention of the action and events that occurred before the entrance of Mr. Lockwood. Emily Bronte ne jo wrap up of time use ke hai that has been very beautifully used because of these two narrations of Lockwood and Nelly Dean. Lockwood's time frame reference of the mansion of Wuthering Heights and the character's mental state is completely different from the observation of Nelly Dean. Lockwood ki observation completely different hai. Nelly Dean ki narration past time ki refer, reference hai. Wuthering Heights ki or uh, Thrush Cross Grange ki. Lockwood initially only tries to convince himself the narration of Nelly Dean to be true. Lockwood ko sab kuch manna hi padta hai jo ki Nelly Dean unhe bata rahi hai. Sari reality. The duality of the different time frame references makes the novel perceive it from a different lens as it tracks the development of character from the past to present. Ek tarike se flashback form mein hume ye story jannne ko milti hai with the help of Nelly Dean. Nelly Dean tells, us, uh, tells it to Lockwood and Lockwood tells it to the readers. Passage to India, one of my favorite novels, 1924 novel by English author E.M. Foster, set during the period of British Raj and the independence, Indian independence moment in 1920s. E.M. Foster ne bhi ek kafi customary method, traditional method of telling the story used kiya hai in Passage of India. It is <coughs> that of an omniscient narrator. Again, omniscient narrator, narrator who is present everywhere or you can say third person narrator who overviews the actions comments from any angle and can enter the mind of any character this narrator has distinctive voice he is humane cultured skeptical also skeptical uh se doubtful rehte about the characters about the characteristics ironic bhi hai, but is also capable of tempering his tone apni tone ko situations ke hisab se characters ke aspirations characters ke mood ke hisab se mold karne mein bahut successful hue story ko ek bahut hi mystery story technique ke point of view se liya gaya iska atmosphere aisa hai which makes it a very good mystery story a succession of exciting events arouses a desire in the reader to know what will happen next 
आगे क्या होने वाला है ऐसे ही एक्साइटमेंट बनी रहती है फॉस्टर्स टेक्निक इज टू इंट्रोड्यूस अ क्राइसिस एंड देन टू ट्राई टू रिजोल्व इट एक क्राइसिस क्रिएट किया गया है पहले और फिर उसको रिजोल्व किया गया डॉक्टर रजीज एज यू नो द सेंट्रल कैरेक्टर हैड बीन एक्यूज्ड ऑफ अटेम्प्टेड रेप बट नोबडी वाज सर्टेन वेदर ही एक्चुअली ट्राइड टू मोलेस द इंग्लिश लेडी मिस एडेला क्वेस्टेड और नॉट देयर वाज नो विटनेस एंड मिस एडेला क्वेस्टेड हरसेल्फ वाज नॉट श्योर इफ शी वाज मोलेस्टेड एंड वेदर इट वाज अजीज और इवन समवन एल्स द प्रॉब्लम इज रिजॉल्व्ड व्हेन मिस एडेला क्वेस्टेड हरसेल्फ विथड्रॉज द चार्जेस but the charge itself and the event following it have released a series of reaction which keep the story moving till it comes to a very satisfactory end in the end of the novel here comes the great expectations by charles dickens again a very famous novel the story of pip an english orphan who rises to wealth deserts his true friends and becomes humbled by his own behavior that is why we call it buildings roman great expectations is inscribed in the first person point of view with pip presenting himself in two roles pip ke do role hain ek role central character jo wo hain hi aur wahi narrator ka role bhi adopt karte hain pip doesn't tell the events simultaneously or as they happen aise nahi hai ki pip events hone ke sath sath hame batate rehte hain lekin apne flashback ke through events ko hame batate and tells the story based on what he remembers isko hum first person narration to kahenge hi lekin iske sath sath we should call it retrospective narration to because he is retrospecting the past events I'll say in a very beautiful way the narrative technique has been used by Dickens to help the reader understand each and every character and all the important themes in this novel. इतने अच्छे से लिखा गया नॉवेल है कि अगर कोई आपसे पूछे कि why the title is justified और अगर आपने पूरा नॉवेल पढ़ा है, तो you will easily be able to answer that question. How, what kind of relationship Pip and Estella share? Why do we call it to be a fairy tale? Please comment upon the character of Miss Havisham. सब कुछ आप बहुत अच्छे से आंसर कर पाएंगे if you have read the novel properly. He uses the first person point of view and the great descriptions of the settings, a chronological accounting of all the events, and compelling dialogues to create a very powerful story. Dickens का narrative technique इतना beautiful है कि it allows the readers to empathize with the protagonist Pip. पिप जो कि एक टाइम पर अपना वो बेसिक इनोसेंट बिहेवियर लूज कर देते हैं एंड बिकम्स एरोगेंट विद हिज ओन पीपल बट बाय द एंड व्हेन ही रियलाइजेस व्हेन ही इज काइंड ऑफ यू नो हैज एन एपिफेनी अबाउट हिज बिहेवियर तब सारे रीडर्स जो है पिप के साथ सिंपैथाइज करना शुरू कर देते हैं एंड अ सो कॉल्ड नेगेटिव कैरेक्टर इन द स्टोरी मिस हेविशम एक मोमेंट ऐसी भी आती है पूरे नॉवेल में कि हम मिस हेविशम के साथ भी एम्पेथाइज करते हैं to a lifelong journey here towards self discovery and the readers enjoy that self discovery of pip so this is the end of this video you may join the classes to cover all the topics in detail can click the link given in description to get connected to us for admission thanks a lot for watching best of luck for exams and please do not forget to share and subscribe the channel